is Dr. Kat Gallus and I am on live for Instagram and ready to kick off an exciting conversation with my um, friend uh, who is uh, Dr. Jennifer Greer in Ohio. So she is going to be starting in just a minute and we're going to talk about all things plastic surgery and we're planning to do this every couple weeks. Um, we're both moms of three and as soon as she hops on, I'm going to introduce her and we can talk about what's new in plastic surgery. I think um, even this evening, we're going to talk a little bit about um, COVID and how that's been impacting things and then the vaccine. I am officially vaccinated. I got my, it's a little blurry, but I got my second vaccine um, shot today. And so far I feel pretty good, so good stuff. Um, uh, let's see, and then Dr. Greer should be talking, should be uh, joining in just a second. I will uh, try to, there she is. Um, we'll see how her evening's going and go from there. Go live. She's uh, three hours ahead. There you are. Hey. Sec, I was getting oh, the recording going. So are you going to be in mute? So, good to see you. I know. Good to see you, too. You look all awake and alert. And I'm, like, post-bedtime with the kids <laughs> frazzled. Yeah, that'll be me in three hours. I, like, fell asleep at nine last night. I was wiped. I so. think that's very reasonable. Yeah. How old are you? <laughs> right. You're a little bit older than mine, I think, right? Yeah. So I have a nine-year-old, a 12-year-old. I don't know why I have to think about it. And a 14-year-old. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, mine are almost seven, almost five, and almost two. Yep. So yep. same spread, but a little bit notched out a little bit. A little bit earlier on. Yeah. yeah. And then I have all girls. Do you have? I have boy and two girls. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. So boy, girl, girl. Boy, girl, girl. Okay. How's the, so is the boy, was it different to have a, the girls afterwards in terms of like destruction and wreckage or was he pretty chill? Well, so you would think he actually is very like unaware of where his body is in space and will be talking to me and just standing on my foot. But <laughs> our middle daughter is equally destructive in terms of like wreckage and just intense craziness. We were at Chick-fil-A one time and these two little girls who clearly didn't have a brother watched her tear around like in their eyes were like saucer. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> mine were more princess dressy, but. Yeah. yeah, mine do that too. And then they throw on like the Batman cape and it's all good. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, so I was um, mentioning that we're gonna start talking every couple weeks about things that are plastic surgery. Yeah. Um, we were talking earlier this week about what um, what we should name this, and we've been. I know. We didn't <laughs> I come know. up with anything really clever. Um, let me think. I came up with plastics and play dates, but I don't know. Yeah. Because um, carpools and cannulas. Ooh, um, somebody, <laughs> somebody just asked a question about um, having five kids and having extra skin. Yeah, that's definitely. Um, a tummy talk candidate, which yeah. I do a lot of, and I know you do too. I do. Um, I just saw someone today with post two kids, and I'm like, you know, I really need to get this done on myself first. Right. I know. But so, what's the big hang up with having a tummy talk is what? It's always downtime. the downtime. Mm -hmm. Always the downtime. Although I've been moving to a lot more drainless and doing nerve blocks. Are you doing the same kind of thing? I have not been doing that, but that is. Um, would be, uh, you think the drainless gets people moving around faster or? I feel like it does just because those drains are so annoying mm -hmm. and it's hard to shower with them and they tug. Betsy Hall Finley and I think Melinda Hawes, two other doctors that Dr. We know. And I know, um, I started using the Stratifix quilting suture, which okay. really puts off the space and anybody BMI under 30, I've been going drainless and they are like up moving and then I do the tap blocks. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, those help tremendously. So Ruby Bellamonte is asking if cool sculpting will not work. It does not tighten skin. It's uh, equivalent for about a stick of butter each time in terms of melting fat. That's what I tell my patients. Although so. I believe they do have FDA approval for mild skin tightening under the chin. But if you're to the point where you need a neck lift, it's not going to do the job. 
Right. So with regards to tummy, you're probably going to need to have skin. There's almost no way to get it around skin excision. So yeah. actually, one of the ideas we had for this um, in my office, they were trying to come up with some ideas was for naming this talk was um, incision decisions. <laughs> so Ooh, that's good. It is true. There's always a trade off for an incision. And so we like to, we talk about that, like people want a certain outcome, but then are like, are there going to be incisions? And generally, yes. When yeah, you do a tummy tuck, the trade off is an incision. When you do a breast lift, the trade off is an incision. It's our job to make it as a pleasing as possible and, you know, the nicest scar possible. But right. yeah. And definitely. we have a lot of tricks up our sleeves too, because we're really good at placing them in places. Like I've seen some tummy tuck scars, and I bet you have two that are just too high. Mm -hmm. and you know, then you're trying, you can't wear a toothpiece bathing suit. I did a revision on somebody just a couple months ago who had that issue, had a tummy tuck with someone else. So we know where to hide them. We know mm -hmm. how to manage them post-op. You know, we do the scar gel with silicone and then we've got access to lasers if we need to flatten them yep. out and lighten them. So it can make a huge difference who manages the scar. Yep. And I practice very similarly, um, do uh, scar gel and lasers post-op and it works really well um, to kind of get your collagen to line up like it's supposed to um, on the thing. And then I know um, my, <laughs> somebody's asking to give a thumbs up for names you like, but um, yeah, so we will talk about that again <laughs> in a minute, I guess. I spent way too much time trying to come up with a name for this little get together. Oh, but no. I'm sure I we'll figure it out. Brainstorming. She's like coming up a list of everything she can think of with kids and then everything she can think of with plastic surgeons. Oh, she did come up with makeover mamas, which I thought was cool, but it sounded kind of like it could be queer eye for the straight guy and we're doing like lifestyle makeovers. Right, right. Yeah. Like mommy makeovers, but. Yeah. And to Ruby Bellamonte, yeah, no problem on your answer. It takes on average 18 months of people thinking about plastic surgery before they even like go in for a consultation for major surgery. I feel like people will do Botox on the fly, but really do a lot of research and consideration before you even kind of get in the door. Yeah. <laughs> Aesthetic errands voting for incision decision. Nice. Um, it, the alliteration's nice. Yeah. Um, have you gotten your vaccine yet? I have Moderna first stage and second one is next Wednesday. You had your second one today, right? Today. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? And I got so Pfizer. Fine. I was super tired before I went to get my vaccine. So, um, and then I had a Diet Coke and now I'm good. So maybe that's the answer. Maybe you that's should take a Diet Coke with your, yeah, with your vaccine and then it'll be all good. So yeah. Um, I, so interestingly, I don't know that there's been any um, issues with the Pfizer vaccine making news, you know, news articles or any headlines rather. But um, Moderna, did you, I presume, yes. <laughs> I presume I saw you knew about that. That there have been a couple cases of swelling. And of course, I have filler on board, like my face right. is never without. So I had lip filler before Moderna. And I wondered if I was going to puff up, but nothing. Yeah, so it sounds like I think they had three cases reported and both as um, members of our national societies, we got, you know, um, kind of updates and um, emails regarding all of that. And they were, hi, Dr. Sunita. Um, they um, basically said that there were just three cases of people having some prolonged swelling after um, having the Moderna vaccine, the first dose with um, filler. And when we all saw that, we were like, oh no. <laughs> I'm picturing in like our world. society meeting and we're all puffed up, but. Right, it's gonna be some big exposure of who has filler in their face. But I don't think it has, um, it hasn't really like been more of a concern. And I was a little upset because they don't give you any, they gave us details about somebody had just had lip filler two days prior. And then the other people had had filler six months earlier. But, um, I don't think they didn't say what type of filler, you know, we don't have the details on that. We're not the FDA. We're not privy to that information. So I would say everybody resolved pretty quickly with mm -hmm. just oral steroids and oral antihistamines. Like nobody had to have the filler dissolved and nobody had to have steroid injections or anything crazy. So it was right. very self-limited and definitely worth being protected against COVID. Right. 
Yes, it's definitely worth worth it in, in, the, in the effort not to get COVID. And then in San Diego, they actually pulled a lot of Moderna vaccines because they were concerned about anaphylaxis. But again, I feel like they're um, uh, doing a really good job of monitoring everything and making sure that um, people are safely vaccinated. And so the women in my office got vaccinated with the, the Moderna vaccine. And aside from whining, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm calling you out, Erin, about this, whining about their arm hurting, which, no, I know that was real. Um, they were fine. And they're due to get their second dose shortly, too. So, yeah, right. we are still, we're in phase 1A, so hospital workers are still getting it. But nobody's really had anything worse than some aches and maybe some chills. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping I don't get aches or chills or I get a headache usually anyway, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, and then is your office gonna, there's, they have to wait to get the vaccine or? Yeah, so doctor's offices in my area can do it, but the way they phrased it, it was either offices who see COVID patients regularly or primary care, and we're not really oh, in that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've had two staff already have COVID recently, so they're not mm. too worried. And then another one of my staff is actually a part-time dental hygienist, so she was able to get it. So most, almost all the full-time people are protected. Oh, that's good, that's good, yeah. yeah. So, um, okay, well, I think we covered COVID pretty good. Um, what, uh, let's talk about what you want to talk about next time. What do you I think? Because we have very similar practices, I think, right? A lot mm -hmm. of aesthetics, a lot of body sculpting, breast implants, breast surgery. Oh, so my sis sister says we're coordinated in our colors. We did not, yeah. No, we didn't plan this. On Wednesdays, Actually, we wear burgundy. <laughs> Seriously? Oh, yeah. Uh, no. I actually, I, I have like, I call it a capsule wardrobe, but it's really called I only buy the same three colors. So it's either blue, pink, black, well, I guess white and gray, but those are all neutrals. So. Oh, that's smart. Then and it, it all stays. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps it simple. And then you don't have to worry about coordinating when you have to get up and get ready to go to work, right? I can actually grab stuff in the dark and it usually matches. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, I still remember back when I was in the Navy, the interns took a picture of somebody who got dressed in the dark in their uniform and then showed up for work in their uniform and had red socks on with their khaki pants because he pulled oh. red socks. Yeah, oh. that's oh a, considered a uniform violation. But, oh. you know, what are you going to do? You can go downstairs actually and buy uniform socks in the hospital. So, wow. solve that problem. Yeah. That so. is like a whole different side of life that I've not experienced. Thank you right. for serving. And you've been deployed. You've been to Afghanistan, right? Yes, I have. Yep. Um, I see those pictures of you on Facebook in your <laughs> uniform, looking all serious. Yes. Yeah. Trying to keep up my serious face. I sort of <laughs> added a little pizzazz to Afghanistan, I guess, when I was there. <laughs> you know, Afghanistan could use more pizzazz. Yeah, I definitely could. I feel like I was telling somebody the other day, I can't remember, I was a patient, because I like to talk if I'm doing a procedure under local, it's nice to, you know, keep the conversation going about how bad it smelled. Actually, I think it was my recent ER patient, how bad it smelled in Afghanistan and that, um, pe oh, because he was asking me about my deployment and asked me what people sent me or if people, if they sent mail. And I was like, yeah, they sent me all kinds of scented stuff because it smelled so bad there. There's no where I was was just a little outpost. So it's not actually like there's nothing there. There's no sewer system. There's no, it's just like there's a pile of rocks and go set up an encampment. And so they burn all the trash. Oh. And so it smells nasty when they burn the trash. So I was like fully stocked with like Bath and Body Works and like anything Uber body shop, anything Uber scented. Um, but after a while, the other guys, the surgeons in my group, um, that I shared space with were like, you smell like a cupcake at this point. <laughs> and you're like, Are you not supposed it's to layer weird. the fence there? <laughs> They're like, we appreciate that it smells nice, but like someone's going to just kidnap you at some point and think you're a dessert. And I was like, yeah. I don't know. I just can't take the smell of burning plastic and uh, it's gross. So don't recommend burning your trash. Okay. Um, yeah, so similar practices. I feel like we could have a couple of different discussions and we can see what people like want to hear about. But a lot of uh, we could talk about breast implants, maybe yes. different types of implants. Those kind are of always good. And I actually had a patient ask me today, like, you know, could I get sick from having these? I'm like, breast implant illness is a good talk. Let's discuss that. Yeah. Um, 
So that's always a good topic to cover. I know there's a lot of interest in safety, especially of breast implants. Yeah. So um, let's plan on maybe talking, hashing that out at our next uh, Wednesday chat, whatever we're going to call that. I think uh, in yeah, you guys <laughs> submit names. Like I'm going to post this on my Instagram. I'm going to ask for submissions. We'll probably get something really great. Okay. Yeah, we'll put it out to the public. Um, uh, I think that's pretty good. Are you, what are you, where are your kids at in terms of, are they all in bed right now or? Are, okay, so <laughs> closure. they are all in, in my room, in my bed. Oh, so right we now. have even that. Similar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. My husband is over yonder watching Cobra Kai and kind of half listening to this. But the kids have all decided to sleep in our room. The baby's crib is still in our room. And then the okay. five year old, we're like, mm, yeah, we're going to sleep in there too. So he and I trade off nights and he'll sleep in the luxurious setting of our daughter's bedroom tonight and I'll sleep piled in the kids and then tomorrow we'll switch. It'll be great. <laughs> so even the seven year old sleeps with you. Yeah, he never was a snuggler. And like really since now. the pandemic hit, I think with this the schedule change the last few months, he doesn't even go to bed in his room anymore. Like they both just go to bed. Yeah, there's no pretense. Yeah. yeah. So I looked at that 12 foot wide family bed and I thought, that would fit. That would fit in our room. <laughs> I don't think our, our, uh, <laughs> my husband would go for that, but we have a, a California king, which my sister says is unnecessary. King is good enough. But, um, you can see right behind me, I'm in my master bedroom. That couch actually pulls out nice. to, yeah, to a queen sleeper. And so my, um, nine year old still sleeps with me most of the time. Everybody has their own room. But, um, and for the longest time, the oldest one slept in the couch and then sometimes they would do sleepovers in our room and it just, yeah. yeah. And the I, dog, I feel like yeah. really entered the dog sometimes comes in too. So oh, my dog's like, literally we have the same life. He's yeah. right there. <laughs> right? I have this great idea to have my contractor who did our renovation. We have like dormered ceilings. So there's a knee wall and a storage area behind the wall. And I'm like, you know, we could put a trundle bed on wheels and it could pull right out of the wall. <laughs> and if I can just shove it back in during the day it'd be amazing kids could yeah, and that. yep have every, I know we have so many other rooms in our house but yeah right. everyone gravitates to where you are which I guess is nice right it is good. I mean at some point I assume they'll all scatter and then I'll miss them terribly so right right I have yeah in pile for yeah. now <laughs> all right well that's awesome well so are they're all do they go to sleep by themselves because I also have a little bit of a challenge there yeah, we have some fights some nights. We do like bedtime routine. One of us will put the baby down because she's still drinking a bottle. And mm -hmm. then the big kids we read and then they, they mostly will go lay in our bed. And we have found like audiobooks are really, really helpful. Oh, but, I have a friend that did that. Yeah, my, one of them will come down and be like, I had a bad dream. Well, you weren't asleep yet. Well, I can't sleep. So then they sit up with us for a while. <laughs> yeah, I had a bad dream. You actually never went to sleep. Yeah, it's okay. Your eyes <laughs> that doesn't sleep. count. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling my sister, I've been somehow managed to, now instead of reading, I'm with my nine year old, I have to do a story where I am the voice for one of her stuffed animals. And so I, <laughs> it's much more challenging than. That is a high level of creativity to generate at that time. Of day. Oh, gosh. And she'll be like, one more squeaker story. And I'm like, oh, I got to do the voice. I got to come up with a plot line. Yeah. I, it's, yeah. That's tough. That's usually when I'm tired like that. I'm like, do you guys want to watch how to make a cake on videos? Facebook <laughs> lesson. I'm like, you want to learn how to make ice cream cake? Let's do that. Yeah. Can we? Yeah. No, I've tried to pass that off. She's like, no, no, no. We're, I mean, this poor stuffed animal's done all kinds of, had all kinds of adventures because I get desperate. Had box jump fails. I'm <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just like <laughs> reaching. So, yeah. So, um, Nighttime is always a challenge, and so I really appreciate you doing your East Co East Coast time. Hey, um, I told you I'd stay up at least till nine p.m. That's all. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're, like, and you're okay, keeping you're to here. it. So, all right, cool. Well, I think um, we will set up a time. Um, yeah, in a couple. Of <laughs> oh, Aaron's trying to become a, a adopted kid from. Um, my mom who stopped by my office yesterday and then harassed Erin because she wasn't dressed like me and Malia. So, and not nicely. She was like, um, and what's Erin's problem? Exactly like that. <laughs> Ouch. I was like, no, she's treating you like me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> is that a sign? That's a sign of love, right? It is. In my yeah. mom's case, it totally is. Who's not on Instagram. So this will never hopefully get back to her. But, um, 
Yeah. So I think tomorrow we will talk about, I mean, tomorrow, oh my goodness, two weeks from now, let's talk about breast implant illness and breast implants. Awesome. We will do it. And maybe Perfect. I can, we could switch off probably who starts the yeah. live too so our yes. followers see it. I will, uh, I will join you. I think that'll be perfect. Awesome. Thanks, I'll still record the screen. Cool. So good to 